After four long days, the train car stopped. We'd arrived at our destination, but I couldn't see much of anything outside the tiny window. People were yelling in German outside, but the door stayed shut. Papa! We don't know where we are. They've lied to us. We're not at a work camp. Eva, we must pray for mercy. Everyone, please come to me. He pulled my family together into the corner of the train car. Promise me that if any of you survive this terrible war, you will go to Palestine, where your Uncle Aaron lives, and where Jews can live in peace. Please. Schnell! Schnell! Quick! Quick! They told us. My family exited the car and waited in utter terror. The smell hit me first. It was a foul odor that I wasn't familiar with. It reminded me of when we would singe off the last feathers on a plucked chicken, only the smell was much worse. The platform that we stood on was utter chaos. There was yelling, dogs barking, orders flying left and right, and crying. So much crying. Eva, Miriam, stay with me. I didn't even realize until it was too late. My father and my sisters, Eden and Elise, had disappeared. Now I only had Miriam and Mama. Zmolin! Zmolin! They were calling for twins. A guard walked past us and stopped when he saw Miriam and I in our matching dresses. Are they twins? Is that good? Yes. <sighs> they are twins. Mama, Mama! Without even another word, we were pulled away. I looked behind me, and there was Mother being held back by another guard as we were dragged away. Let go! Mama! and she disappeared into the crowd, buried by so many other victims. After that, everything happened so fast. We ended up on another platform, grouped with 13 other sets of twins. Eva, we'll be all right, Miriam. We were led into a room, the barber shop. We were told that we were privileged. We got to keep some of our hair. But as I watched my long braids fall, I didn't feel very privileged. After all of us had our hair cut, they again moved us, leading us to another room, this time to take a shower. After our clothes and bodies were disinfected, we were given our own clothes back, another privilege. They, they painted on our dresses. It was true. Now our burgundy dresses were tainted with a big red cross. I don't like it. Why do you think they did it? So that we won't escape. We've been marked. The guards then went around asking everyone to hold out their arms for them to sear numbers into. But not me. I didn't want them to. Let me go! I want my mama! Hold still! Bring back my mama! We will let you see her tomorrow. Liar! It took four people to hold me down. Stop! That hurts! Because of my struggling, my number was blurred. Miriam was calm and placid. Her number was clear. The last thing they did to us that day was feed us a slice of bread and gave us some brown liquid that the other girls called fake coffee. We can't eat this. What? It's all you get until tomorrow. You'd better eat it. It's not kosher. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have the extra bread, but the two of you are going to have to learn to eat everything if you want to survive. You can't be fussy and worry about whether or not something is kosher. Where are we? You're in Birkenau. It's part of Auschwitz, but it's three kilometers from the main camp. Auschwitz has one gas chamber and one crematorium. I don't understand. What's a gas chamber? What's a crematorium? Follow us and we'll show you. What are they burning so late in the evening? People. You don't burn people. Don't be ridiculous. The Nazis do. They want to burn all the Jews. Did you see how the Nazis divided everyone on the platform this morning? If the Nazis think that you're strong enough to work, you're allowed to live. If not, you're taken straight to the gas chambers and gassed to death. They're probably burning that group right now. I thought of Mama, sick after her illness, and Papa, clutching his prayer book for dear life. I thought of Edith and Elise. They are most likely dead, probably burning. We're children. We can't work, but we're still alive. For now, that's only because we're all twins for Dr. Mengele's experiments. He'll probably be here tomorrow after roll call. What experiments? Stop worrying and go to bed. You'll want to be well rested for tomorrow. And so, Miriam and I did as we were told. We slept together in a wooden bunk, 
land of straw in the barrack. The entire time we were in Auschwitz, we stayed together. We never would have survived if we weren't twins. Strange as it is, we survived because of the angel of death.